So as a, a near retiree, if I had a fairly limited budget looking for conservative returns, I think I'd probably look towards more some of the, in, uh, the invest smart, balanced income and growth portfolios because I feel they are much more broadly based, they're much closer to the, the overall index. I'm looking for intelligent investor as my, well, maybe Ferrari is the wrong word, but for me it's that part of my portfolio that really is seeking the higher returns. I'm expecting it to outperform at times and certainly the outperformance recently has been you know, really quite extraordinary. G'day members and welcome to The Economic View. My name is Mitchell Snedden and I'm joined by Callum Pickering. Good to be here. Now Callum, the RBA is meeting again uh, for one of their 11 meetings uh, this year. What are your expectations coming out of that? Well, we both know that they're not going to change interest rates at this meeting. All the investors out there also know that. So attention is going to turn to exactly what the RBA has to say. Now, I think investors are probably going to focus most keenly on what they have to say regarding the housing market. Also, the Australian dollar, as well as financial conditions, both in Australia and abroad. Now, speaking of the housing market, I mean, it's been very well talked about uh, for a long time. We were just talking off camera about how there's been people talking down the housing market or predicting a bubble for the last 10 years, and it seems that uh, it's continued on. Um, now, if that talk is escalating more and more right now, the RBA, one of the tools at their disposal, of course, is interest rates. Why would they look to increase interest rates now? Or, or talk about a potential further interest, interest rate increase uh, when they know that the property market is incredibly sensitive to that and it could you know, push us closer to that edge. So one of the most keenly debated topics uh, within central banks is what should central banks do with regards to asset bubbles? In this case, we're talking about a potential property market bubble. Now, none other than Philip Lowe, the governor of the Reserve Bank, actually wrote about, about this back in 2002, where he actually argued that central banks should actually raise rates if there is a potential risk of an asset bubble. And the idea behind that is that you get ahead of the bubble and so you try and uh, pop it to release some, release some of the pressure uh, before it gets too bad. Now, the argument for Australia would be that we've probably let it get too far at this point and that if the Reserve Bank was to go ahead and raise rates by 25 or 50 basis points, that might actually be sufficient to actually pop it and cause you know a fair bit of... Um, trouble for the Australian economy. So Philip Lowe wrote about this back in 2002, um, saying that they should maybe use interest rates to, to ease uh, that, that potential bubble. And now, what are the indications that we are actually probably beyond the point of just being able to let the air out a little bit and coming to the point where any kind of rise in the interest rates will be like a pin pricking that balloon? Well, the first major issue is that we don't actually know that we're at that level yet. It's quite possible the Reserve Bank could increase rates by 25 or 50 basis points and the housing market might, may actually take it in its stride. It has proven to be somewhat resilient so far. We've seen some of the major banks have uh, introduced out-of-cycle uh, mortgage rate hikes and that doesn't seem to have dampened demand at all. That said, there has to be some risk involved when you see some of the sort of almost frenzied um, lending activity that we have seen over the past uh, three or four years, particularly in the investor segment, uh, where prices are increasing at a very rapid pace. Often at auctions, houses are going for well over the reserve price as well. So there is that risk where you don't know exactly where that point is. And if the central bank was to, to hike um, much earlier than anticipated, they could potentially uh, prick the bubble and cause significant economic problems. Aside from the RBA, the other, uh, what, what they'd probably be hoping to happen is for APRA to step in and create some uh, rules and regulations uh, around uh, lending. What signs have we got around uh, what APRA are doing? So APRA provides the Reserve Bank with a little, little bit more policy flexibility. The problem with interest rate policy, it's a very blunt instrument and it can't easily target certain segments of the market. This is where APRA can step in and they can say, look, investor lending's going um, too high too quickly, we can do something and weigh on that segment of the market. And that's exactly what they did when they introduced their 10% uh, investor credit limit back in 2015. More recently, uh, last week, they introduced a, a policy that targets interest-only loans. So they said to banks, look, we want investor-only loans to account for no more than 30% of new mortgages that you issue. 
and that's down from between 40 and 50 percent for most of the major banks. So that represents a significant change in, in their activities going forward. How do banks respond to those regulations? Are they, are they happy for them? Are they pleased for them? Are they, do they just take them in their stride and go, oh, well? Well, it's in their best interest to take it in their stride. I mean, they could, they could argue against it, but there's the potential that APRA says, OK, well, you don't want to do that, then we'll introduce something stricter. Let's turn our attention to something else that I probably see as a risk uh, to the housing market as well, and that's just employment. I mean, I, I came back from uh, some a couple of days in Perth last week, uh, walking around the Perth C to CBD. Uh, you looked up at the, the buildings, and there was a lot of big signs with floors f for lease. Now, uh, you can imagine not too long ago, those floors uh, were full of employees. Um, so how, how does a, what does the employment market uh, look like right now and what kind of risks is that uh, presenting to the housing market? Yeah, we have a very mixed labour market across the country. The places such as Perth where they have a fully fledged recession and that's reflected in the high levels of unemployment that you see uh, when you go over there. Um, cities such as, as Melbourne and Sydney are obviously performing much better and then you've got other cities such as Brisbane and Adelaide which are in between. There's an argument uh, when it comes to the housing market that you're only likely to see a housing market crash if you see a significant jump in unemployment. And that's because that's the point at where you begin to see more credit defaults um, and that begins to hit the market right the way through. So I would argue that any further deterioration in the labour market does represent a very significant threat to um, the housing sector. It's just whether we get that sort of economic shock that's likely to trigger that employment event. Um, now that could arise from a variety of different reasons. Possibly the major one continues to be commodity prices. So they've obviously been quite resilient over the past 12 months, but if they were to, to go lower again and, and potentially go lower than they were throughout that 2014 period, then that would obviously present a pretty significant risk to the labour market across the country. And that could uh, weigh on the housing market. Um, what other uh, potential risks then? We've got commodity prices, but what else would roll into presenting potential employment uh, issues? Well, somewhat ironically, it could very well be the housing market that represents the biggest risk for employment, and then that in turn provides the biggest risk for the housing market. And by that I mean, for the last few years, uh, rising asset prices and house prices has underpinned uh, the retail sector in Australia. It's driven household spending, with, particularly within Sydney, and Melbourne. Um, but if property prices were to begin to slow down uh, in terms of growth, that would obviously weigh on the retail sector in those two states. And that's going to begin to hit employment, uh, one would think, particularly given that um, household consumption represents about 55% of the Australian economy. Excellent. Well, um, Callum, we'll look to leave it there, but uh, there's still plenty more to talk about about uh, this potential bubble. Are you calling it a bubble? Go on. <sighs> I wouldn't necessarily go that far, but I can understand why other people do. Great. Well, Callum, thanks for joining us, and members, we'll catch you next time.